you think you're done, but you're not. Okay? So it's where you use the power rule, like you drop the number and the exponent in front and reduce it by 1, but there's something inside that you haven't found the derivative of. So remember I told you when you differentiate, you always have to do the derivative of everything at some point. Correct? So if I did <clears throat> x to the 100, say it was y equals x to the 100, y prime would be 100 x to the 99. We agree? And we've always had just like x before. That's all we've had. Actually, when we did the e to the x, we were doing chain rules while you just didn't really know you were doing it. You're welcome. Okay. So here it says... If you have f prime g, f of g of x, like a composition of something, prime, you have to do the derivative of the outside, that's what this means, f prime, and you rewrite the g, and then you do the derivative of g prime. So basically what you do is you do the derivative of the outside and you work your way in, it's a chain. And you're going to get little brackets behind that look like little chain links on it. Chain link, chain. Of chains. You know? Chains. Link. Chains. Yeah. Okay. So we work our way from outside in. So if I go to look at this one, find the derivative of y equals, and these are composite functions. Composite functions means you have a function embedded in a function. We've done these before. We did them in, in 30 days. What you do is you take the derivative of the outside. What's the derivative of the outside? You do, you write 100 x to the 99, correct? x just happens to be a lot more things. So we're going to write 100 whatever x is, to the 99. So we don't differentiate the g right away. I see some of you going like 100, 3x squared minus 4 to the 99. No, that is not real. You do the outside, rewrite the inside, because that's your g, and you don't touch it. Now what have I not done the derivative of yet? The inside. So I make a chain, which is a, aka a bracket, and I do the inside. So what's the derivative of x cubed minus 4x plus 1? 3x squared minus 4. Minus 4. Done. Box it. Yeah, not hard. Done so badly. But not hard. <laughs> because what you guys will do is you'll forget to do the inside, or you'll do the inside right away, and you'll give me 100, 3x squared minus 4 and to the 99. Then no chains. What, what chain did you do? That ain't chain rule. That's just a rule that you made up. That's what that is. Yeah, I don't like it. Okay? Please don't give it to me. It will be wrong. <laughs> okay. So B, what we've dealt with so far is just cos x. We agree? But we don't have cos x, x being the g of x. So this is like cos of g of x. We pretend this is our g of x in here, correct? So we do the derivative of the outside first. So it's derivative of cos x. So we're going to get negative sine x. What's x? 3x. 3x minus pi over 4. We agree? Then what do I have to do? 3x minus pi over 4. 3x minus pi over 4 in a chain behind it. What's the derivative of 3x? 3. What's the derivative of minus pi over 4? Nothing. Nothing. Zero. Both away. They won't often write it like this. They'll often take this, if this is just a 3 or whatever, they'll often bring it to the front. Just like this 3x squared minus 4, they'll often bring it in front of this one to the 99. They usually write the 99 one last, if you're going to look for the order that they do it in. So they'll usually, because this is all just multiplication, right? Yeah, I, can, I can shift them around. Yeah, do not distribute. That's 99. But they sort of still be bracketed. They would just yeah, because yeah, it's commutative. Pro they can just move all around. Multiplication, boom, 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 all over the place. And because it's chain rule, you can move them. However, I'll see people do this. They'll move this 3x minus pi over 4 to the front. That's attached to the sign. This is like, a, you just cut off this person's feet. Like, this is like head, feet. You just took the feet away. Okay, it's either attached. So we're going to go y prime equals negative 3. And then the sign is 3x minus pi over 4 has to stay with it. It is what is beside the sign. It's like the 30 degrees or the pi over 6, right? So it has to stay. <clears throat> this one. Whenever you have anything that is a square root, what's the first thing you do? Yes. Raised to the power of a half. So if you have a square root raised to the power of a half, you have a cube root raised to the power of a third. We've taught that in grade 10, remember? 
Well, you were taught it in grade 12, like just recently by me. So yes, you remember. Okay. So we're going to get x squared plus 1 to the half. Okay. Now some people will write y prime and say they're done. You've done nothing. You just literally wrote it to the half. Please don't write y prime and box it. You have not done the derivative. You have not done anything really. You've just changed the formatting. So, y prime equals, how do I do the derivative of this one? The half drops in front. This just gets rewritten. And then 1 half minus 1 is negative a half. And then I'm done. No, I'm not. Because I am doing chain rule, so I need some chains here. So what's the next one? 2x. Yeah. 2x. There's a lot of answers coming out there. <laughs> there was just x's. There was a lot of different, there was about four different answers that were not correct. You were just testing to see if I was paying attention. What's it? Why can't we just bring it out and then we do You can't raise it to the power of a negative a half. It's a binomial. How would you foil negative a half? I have no idea. So therefore, don't do it. Yeah, but you couldn't just go x. And then plus one, so one half? No, that's not real. Like, you can't just distribute in a brick. Like, it's like x plus one squared. You don't just distribute it. This is why, Shane, I know what you're saying. Okay, pay attention because you guys will try and do this too. If you have x plus one squared, remember I told you what you're going to try and do is go x squared plus one, which is not real. It's actually x plus one times x plus one. It's two of them, correct? So if it's two negative a half, I don't know how you would rewrite that to be able to distribute it. But you, I do know you can't put that in. I just wouldn't do it that way. Okay. Now, this will not be the answer. The problem with chain rule is not the chain part. The problem is your simplifying sucks. That's the part that, that really rucks people. These ones are nice. It's when you have a chain rule embedded in like a product or a quotient, right? Because you're going to have it. Like your F or your G is going to be a chain rule embedded in a product or a quotient. That's when it gets dicey. That's when it gets harder. Okay? So it's often not the chain rule that burns people. It's once we start putting it in with our product and quotient. But honestly, if I get a chain rule, I mean, you know when we get an E to the X in a product or quotient, it's really easy because we can just take an E to the X out? When we have a chain rule embedded in a product or quotient, it's really easy because you're going to be able to take out a really easy GCF as well. So when I see a chain rule or an e to the x, most people start freaking out. Those make me happy because they make my simplifying way easier in the product and quotient, to be blatantly honest. That if it, you have a chain rule in a product or quotient, it makes your simplifying way easier and way less distribution often. Okay, so what do we do here? The 2x can come to the front and often it does. Remember I told you that? Often they'll bring this to the front. So they'll write this as 1 half and then 2x and then this behind. What can I do here? <clears throat> the half and the 2 become a... Oh, yeah. I was looking for 1. But a 1x is true. Yes. Mm -hmm. Feel what you're... Yeah. I just said the 1 half and the 2 and you're like an x. And then my head was like not going with... Yes, it's just an x. And then they won't usually leave the negative beside. They'll often take this whole thing and put it to the denominator and make it positive. Because you can make a negative exponent positive by moving it to the denominator or a negative exponent denominator positive by moving it to the numerator. Grade 10. This is not part of the special triangles. But I'm glad you remember that. Stuff. <laughs> okay. And often they'll put the radical back. It just depends. If you leave it like this, this is good for me. I just want you to know that the radical can come back because it's a multiple choice and you could have to match it. So the other option could be this. I could just bring the radical back instead of leaving it as a half. <laughs> Okay, you guys try D. So, 
Let's just do the derivative of e to the negative x down here so we can see what it is. So e to the negative x, I told you whenever you have a numerical base to a variable exponent, which numerical base, e is a numerical base, it's 2.718, blah, 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 it's like pi. So, oh no, the woodpeckers are back. I just saw one fly by my window. So we have d over dx is just saying the derivative of e to the x. This just to help you out. So what do we do when we have that? We rewrite it. That's our first step. And ln of the base, which just happens to be ln e. And what is ln e? 1. So it goes away. And then derivative of the exponent, negative 1. So the derivative of e to the negative x is actually negative e to the negative x. Or negative 1, if you will, e to the negative x. So e to the x is e to the x, but e to the anything else x is e to that multiplied by the derivative of the exponent. So, we have to do the outside first. The derivative of tan is secant squared x. So we get secant squared x. And then the derivative of e to the x is negative e to the x, which is completely correct, but like I said, they often rewrite that at the front, and I don't know why, it's just formatting. And there's the now tries. <clears throat> okay. Next page. Okay. Nothing crazy new. Try these two out. Go. Okay. So the derivative of e to the x squared minus 4. What do you do? You have a numerical base to a variable exponent. You rewrite it which is a chain, and then another chain is ln of the base, which just happens to be e, which becomes a 1, and then the third chain is derivative of the exponent, which is 2x, and they'll often rewrite it with the 2x at the front. Do you see how there's chains here? That's why it's called chain rule. <clears throat> because you have, a you have not just a basic function now, you have a function with another function embedded. So e to the x is your basic function, but now we have e to the x squared minus 4. So this is like a g of x embedded in the e to the x function. You have to address it. Because a lot of word problems involve stuff like this. Okay. Shh. Quiet, please. So we have y equals sine 4 e to the x. The derivative of sine is cos. Positive because sine is not a c. And then we rewrite it. And then the derivative of 4e to the x is 4e to the x. And you can stop like this or know that it can move to the front. It doesn't really matter. <coughs> okay. If there was like 4x to the 4x, Yes. No, if it was 4e to the 4x, you'd get 4e to the 4x times 4. You'd have to chain again. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah Seamus? First? What did you say? I don't know what you said. <laughs> I'm not like... Oh, no, because it's embedded in. Yeah, I feel what you're saying. Okay. Um, that's a good question because I've seen a lot of people do that. So you cannot put these two together because this 4e to the x is actually like the cos of pi over 4 times pi over 4. So like you'd have to let pi over 4 come to the front. They can't join because it's attached to a cos. Right? These people try and square it. Okay. Example 3. Find an equation of a tangent line. Tangent line equation always the exact same. You find the first derivative because the first derivative gets you the... <laughs> tangent, slope, and then you need an x and a y. Shh. If they just give you an x, how do you get the y? You input it back into the original to get your y, and then you can get your equation. Sometimes they just give you the y, and they don't give you the x. You input the y in, and solve for x, which is actually hard. So you hope they give you the x. Okay. So find an equation of a tangent to y equals 
5e to the 4x at 0, 0,5. So this is my x, my y. I need my m tangent. How do I get my m tangent? My m tangent is just the derivative of y. So what is the derivative of 5e to the 4x? Well, if I have a coefficient, what does that do? Nothing. It just stays, right? If I have a coefficient on a function, it just stays. So I get 5e to the 4x times ln of the base, so ln e. You don't have to show this every time, but I'm proving a point. And then the derivative of the exponent, which is 4. Now this 4 and this 5 will join, and they'll write it as 20, just so you know. They'll go 20 e to the 4x plus e. So that's m tangent, but I have m tangent, that's my general slope m tangent. So this is the tangent slope of every single x in the world on this graph, right? But I want it at 0, and often they'll pick 0, because it's something that if it's in a non-calculator section, you can get it. So if you go e to the 0, try it in your calculator, go e to the 0. One. So we're going to go 20 e and then 4 times 0, which is just 0. What is e to the 0? 1. So that's why they pick it if it's in a non-calculator section, because you can still do this math. So you always have to remember e to the 0 is 1. And then if it's in a non-calculator active section, it'll often be e to the 0, because it's 1. And you get a nice answer of 20. That's my m tangent. And then I always do my point slope form. I only go from there. So it's y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So it's going to be y minus 5 equals 20 x minus 0. Do we need the x minus 0? No. So we have y minus 5 equals 20x. And then that could be the answer. Or it could be y equals 20x plus 5. You, what, which is the best form? The form that matches the multiple choice. That's the best form. If it's a written response, if, unless they ask for a specific form, which I've never seen them do, boom, 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 box it, move on. doesn't matter. Okay? Now here it says, find the equation of the tangent to this, uh, root 2x plus 1 at 4, 3. So you guys try that one out. So when we do the derivative of this one, we're going to get 1 half 2x plus 1 to the negative half times 2. If we're filling in a 4, we don't have to try and simplify it. Sometimes when you guys simplify, it's where the errors happen. Remember I told you that once you find the derivative, sometimes it's easier just to plug in the value and get an answer. Um, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to follow what I said. So I'm going to go normally, but the two and the half could join each other and they go away, correct? They would be a one. But if you're just given a number, you can just plug it in and not worry about that. So we're going to get one half times 2 times 4 plus 1. And remember, this particular question can be in a non-calculator active section because you can do the math on here. I promise you, you can. So we go 1 half, believe in yourself, and then you go 9 to the negative a half times 2. Now, what does a negative do? You can, you, can, you can move it down and then square root it, yes. So with the negative, we would go 1 half, the 9 would become 1 over 9 to the half, correct? Because if this is 9 over 1, you can flip it to make it positive to the 2. And what is half just? Square root. And when you square root of 1, you get? And you square root of 9, you get? Can you do this in your head? Yes, I wasn't lying. So we get 1 half times 1 third times 2, which is 2 over 6, which is? One third. <laughs> I believe in you. Okay. So we're going to go y minus 3 equals one third x minus 4 box it. Sometimes what they'll do is they make it not have a fraction, correct? So then I would have to multiply both sides by 3. three. The 3 on this one would get me 3y minus 9. The 3 on this one would just cross off the fraction. 
it would just go away and I'd be left with that point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's what's for homework for tonight.